So welcome back to the shop, friends. So I have dreamed for years of having a two-stroke dirt bike that was street legal with a, a legitimate license plate, blinkers, horn, the whole thing. Today, we're gonna make that happen. My goodness, this is a lot of pieces here. Uh, this is allegedly everything that I'm going to need uh, to make uh, the TE300 street legal. So I'll kind of show you the, the pieces right here. So uh, we have to have uh, a couple mirrors. So these are rear view mirrors. Here is a, a rear, this is a rear brake switch. So this is a hydraulic switch that will, uh, so when you press on the brake, that that will activate the rear brake light. We have here, off and on and off and on engine switch. I'm not sure what that is. I already have one of those on there. Here's the blinker relay or the flasher for the LEDs that will cause the, the blinkers to, to turn. These blinkers here are for the rear. These would be the rear turn signal indicators right there. These are for the fronts, which are supposed to go in these um, hand guard covers right there. So that's kind of cool with the hand guard covers. We've got uh, the master control switch here. So we've got our high and low beam. We've got our turn signal, left and right, and we've got our, our horn. Horn is another thing we we'll need to have. Here's the horn, of course. Here's the other here, a few little wiring things. I think that these are the perches for these hand guards, if I had to guess. This is a universal kit, and so we'll kind of pick and choose and, and make things work. Um, and then this is, a, of course, the universal rear tail light, uh, brake light combination. And then there, there's the main wiring harness, which I already have on the bike. I'll take over and show you now. So I've got the bike pretty well stripped down and I took the battery and all of that. The nice thing that I'm finding is that this model is available with a dual sport kit. I think it's in Australia or Austria or, or someplace, someplace far from here. So there is plenty of room for the harness. So this is the har This is the aftermarket harness right there. And I'm just running it through the factory raceway. Here's where the battery will go. It goes up front. And then these are the plugs for the front, which will hook up to all of the indicators and the horn. And the nice thing about this is it's all plug and play. I don't have to cut any wires on the bike when I want to put it back uh, to its factory setting. Nothing's going to be you know, messed up apart from I might have to drill a couple holes in the rear fender, but that I think that should be it. So very clean, very simple um, about what I'm told, if you know what you're doing about four hours, uh, for me, it's probably gonna be the better part of a day. Here we've got the rear factory fender, and this you can see is, again, this is a universal kit. You know how that goes. So it's all, uh, all about making it fit, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be any problem. So there you can kind of see how that, uh, how that goes on there like that. A little place, probably a place for license plate. I have to use this thing. It would be nicer to have a little bit cleaner light on there that just mounted to the fender, but I need this black thing on there. Uh, so we have a place to mount these guys, right? Because this has got to be inspected uh, by a state inspector. So it's got to be, it's got to be legit. It's, it's uh, or they won't uh, issue a license plate. So I use a die grinder just to mill out those, those two holes. This has got to clear uh, the factory mounts uh, right there. Uh, now we can, uh, uh, we can bolt that on there, but that's, uh, that's how that's gonna sit on there right there. Some of this dual sport stuff may or may not stay on the bike. This dual sport kit is actually not too bad. Um, uh, it was, I think it was like $180 for, for everything. I thought that that was really reasonable. So I did have to drill, I drilled one, I put a stainless steel a screw in there. There actually was a little cutout for it um, on the little temp on the in the casting there and then i've got uh, i'm installing these uh, little turn signals this look, there you go looks pretty pretty good right there you can see that those mount on there they've got a little rubber seal i mean the components are not super nice but they're not they're not bad and the wiring and the plugs and everything are actually quite good so i drilled those holes i drilled one too many uh, but uh, so i drilled a bigger one here so we can thread this wiring that's where the wire goes i could have just ripped, dropped, wrapped them around the outside but you know even when things are kind of temporary it's still you want to do it as nice as you can right i like that that little rubber on thing on there fits looks kind of finishes it off nicely problem with these things you, you know of course when you go off road the it's going to be the first thing that gets stripped off by a, a branch or piece of brush or something but uh that will get us on through the inspection anyway. That's it for the rear fender. I'm guessing that's probably the, the hardest part of the whole thing, but that's, that's actually pretty clean. We've got the blinkers there. We've got the rear brake light. 
everything all LED. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I, I, I got this at uh, Rocky Mountain ATV in Colorado, and it was their cheapest kit. I think it was the Tusk kit. Um, and again, I think it was $189 for everything. Plus, but that only came with one mirror, and I think I need two mirrors. So I ordered an extra mirror, and that was like five or six dollars. Well, it's not not very expensive, but that's a that's actually looks pretty good there. That's almost good enough to leave it on there. Let's try this fender on and see how it looks. This bike is so well put together. It's got a look at that. It's got a factory race for the wiring. Man, it just couldn't be any any easier. We got all the Nice plug, so the rear fender, how'd that go on there? Like this here, right there. Right, night snaps right in there, very clean. And there it is, installed it. I mean, it looks, it doesn't look goofy, it looks like it, it even supposed to be there. It's actually pretty, pretty nice. Here you can see the other side. So now we're hooking up the blinkers. So the rear tail light, the brake light, that was just a plug. But this one here, we have to make up these little plugs. So we've got the two black ones that went into the, it, those are the ground, went into there, and then the red ones. So I saved this last one. This is, this is actually really easy to do. Don't be intimidated to take on a project like this, even if you don't have a lot of background in, aren't those cool? This, these are snap-on um, wire strippers, they grab the wire, yeah, these, they're just the best. Uh, but don't be afraid to take, take this stuff on. It's, um, uh, it, it's actually quite simple. So these are, these are nice little, little uh, plugs that they provided here. They are, um, these are just like the ones I, that are like Honda uses. So there's the little isolator. And there's probably a tool for this, and I don't. And I don't have it if there is. I'm just using needle nose pliers, but it seems to work pretty good, but what's, Really cool about these connectors, if you look in there, you can see is they've got a double clamp on them. So one clamp is, is to hold the, the wire to make the connection, and the other one is to hold the, the, the shielding there. So I'm just bending that in there like that, smashing that down, and then bending the other one in. It's just two little, little ears. That is pretty good. Now I didn't keep, I didn't mark the wire, so I don't know. One blue is, le there's left and right, blue and orange. And if the blinkers are backwards, then we'll just do the switcherooski. That's all, won't be a problem. So I thought it was easier than taking everything apart and chasing that back. There we go, snapped on. So there's the connection right there, those little guys for the, the blinkers. And then there's the connection here for the, the rear taillight brake light. Very, uh, so just about have it here. This is a connection here. This was a little plug for the to hook into the lithium battery. And then we have, what else do we have? I think that's, this here goes down to the brake switch, which I'm assuming we'll probably do right now. This is the brake line going to the rear caliper. This is the pressure switch that's going to replace the banjo bolt uh, for bleeding the brake. I'm willing to bet that this is going to give us trouble getting the brakes bled with this because we're removing the bleeder tube. But all we can do is go forward. All right, so I topped off the master cylinder. And so I'll have to do this quickly, I guess. Let's see if we can get a bleed on here. I do have pressure, so. Got a little air bubble there. So that is the brake switch installed. These wires here, I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about running any of these. I don't, I don't think there's any polarity on this one, so it shouldn't matter which way they go. Um, I'm not, we're not gonna be tucking any wires away until we do a, a check on all the system, make sure it works. So now I'm installing the front blinkers. This is pretty clever. It's just a replacement handguard. It's got the LED light built into the blinker. And the really nice thing about it, as I already did the other side, is uh, I can take off the factory, or the factory, the take off the fancy ones here. Oh, I dropped it. And the way this is made, it's got that, that channel in there. It just lines right up with the, <laughs> with the factory hole. There's only one hole. So if you wanted to uh, keep these on here permanently, you could just uh, drill another one there and match it up with two. But there you have 
your uh, front blinkers. All right, friends, everything is roughed in. We've got the, the horn connected, the flasher, all this wiring will be all zip tied up behind the number plate. We've got the uh, blinkers left and right. Got those on. I've got the battery, ba battery, battery temporary, con temporarily connected there. Oh, it's been a long day. Uh, we've got the rear signals on, so. Oh, and also the switches. I don't think I showed these to you yet. So we've got our, uh, let's focus there, focus. Focus. All right, so we've got our high and low beam, which I'm not using because I have that, I'll, I'll use the factory uh, headlight and that's got a high and low on it. So we've got a turn signals left and right, a horn. And then this one here, this is to arm the whole system. I wasn't sure what that was for. It's not to shut the engine off, it's to, to turn off the electrical system uh, for the dual sport kit. So here we go, let's turn it on and uh, we'll see together if it works or not. All right, it does work. How about that? Well, that's kind of cool. There's even a white LED underneath there to, to illuminate the license plate. That's pretty cool. Now, does the brake switch work? That's what I was most concerned about. And yes, we have rear brakes. Nice, that's pretty cool. That, that light is really bright. How about, how about indicators? All right, here we go. Right, left, Brake. Oh, I like it. Let's check the front. And left. And right. There's only one thing left. <laughs> Got a horn too. We are, we are set. So I know you're going to ask, what about the tires? Those knobbies are not DOT approved. They're never going to, that's never going to fly. You're wrong. You're wrong. I took off the factory tires and went with the Shinco, this is a Shinco cheater, and I've got the Shinco Fatty up front, and they are DOT approved. Huge, huge bonus. These tires are phenomenal. I went on a ride with them. So this is, a, this is not really a knobby, it's a trials tire. It's a very soft uh, compound, a soft rubber, and with the tubeless system, I'm running the, the rear at three and a half pounds and the front at eight. And what it does is it's so soft and so gooey because it's a trials tire and trials riders, you know, they have, they need that super grip. It just, it folds and bends around rocks uh, with the tubeless. You don't have to worry about pinch flats and it's just phenomenal. And as a super, super bonus, this is a DOT approved uh, tire front and rear. So I'll tell you what guys, I am super stoked about that. That was, that was relatively easy. I think now that I've done it once, if I like to help a buddy put it on, I could probably do the whole thing in two hours, I'll bet. It, it wouldn't take long at all. I called the shop, just I was get, trying to get an idea what the flat rate was on it. They said about four and a half, uh, but I think, I don't think it'd take that long. Maybe they were just CYA on that, but uh, very simple. Um, it's pretty clean, pretty affordable. When you can put a dual sport kit on your bike for $200, um, that's pretty, pretty hard to beat. Um, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll take this up, I'll take this up to the DMV in the next day or two and I'll report back to you if there was any problems. But I don't th think so, we got DOT approved tires. Oh, the mirrors, I'll hang the mirrors on, you don't need to see that. Put the mirrors on, we've got the DOT approved tires, uh, we've got everything legit, we've got the horn, we've got the high low beam headlight, we've got the blinkers, the, the whole deal, the brake light. Very cool, you gotta arm the system there, the brake light. Very cool, all right, that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I uh, hope you're as excited as I am. We'll see you guys on the next one.